Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Yasu Hivi from Conservation International. Today I'd like to talk about uh, ecosystem-based disaster reduction and the role of community engagement in, in the process. Um, first, I'd like to start uh, with a video. Um, it's a video on, on that we Some made call me nature. Uh, called the Nature is Speaking. Others call me Mother Nature. I've been here for over four and a half billion years, 22,500 times longer than you. I don't really need people, but people need me. Yes, your future depends on me. When I thrive, you thrive. When I falter, you falter or worse. But I've been here for eons. I have fed species greater than you, and I have starved species greater than you. My oceans, my soil, my flowing streams, my forests, they all can take you or leave you. How you choose to live each day, whether you regard or disregard me, doesn't really matter to me. One way or the other, your actions will determine your fate, not mine. I am nature. I will go on. I am prepared to evolve. Are you? Thank you. Um, so uh, you might have uh, uh, recognized the voice of the mother nature that was Julia Roberts. Um, so as Julia Roberts was saying, nature uh, can be a, a threat, a risk to society. And, and, it, and it, it, it is sometimes. And it can take away your loved ones. It can take away your livelihoods, your hometown completely, as we saw in, in nearby uh, Tohoku a couple years ago. Um, and usually, in, in a disaster risk reduction context, we see nature as a threat. And we don't really talk about how nature can be a positive uh, force uh, towards disaster risk reduction. And now, with climate change becoming a re reality, uh, where the, the risk of, of natural disaster obviously is, is becoming higher and higher. Uh, now, talking about climate change, uh, Sir Nicholas Stern, a couple years ago, in his famous uh, Stern Review for Economics of Climate Change, said that uh, climate adaptation is sustainable development under severe circumstances. And um, I, I think he put it very well, but I would like to push forward. It also, I think, it means that disaster risk reduction is a precondition to sustainable development. But I want to go further uh, to think that DRR uh, could or should also positively contribute to sustainable development. So not just mitigating the negatives, but be a positive force. Now, disaster like uh, storm surges, flash floods, droughts, uh, landslides, or even epidemics, many of these are, are, are caused by nature. Um, but if we think about it, it's also caused, the root cause, are, most of them are, uh, are, are man-made, like deforestation, climate change. Uh, uh, yeah, climate change, deforestation, um, changing river banks or converting mangroves into shrimp farms, for instance. So I, I, we are thinking at Conservation International that ecosystem-based disaster risk reduction EBDRR or EcoDRR can be one solution that brings not only mitigation of disaster risks, but also being a positive force for sustainable development. So as you can see here, uh, EcoDRR is the use of biodiversity and ecosystems to help people to prepare for and respond to disasters. Uh, it does 
meet the capacity and resource limitations uh, because it could be cost effective, that it could be implemented in, in more rural parts of, 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 of impoverished uh, uh, regions. Uh, it does offer multiple co-benefits, which I will talk uh, about later. Um, so it's not just about reducing uh, disaster risk. Um, like I said, it's often cheaper uh, and to build and to maintain uh, compared to uh, gray hard infrastructure uh, based solutions. And usually no negative environmental and social impacts, obviously, because it's the use of uh, ecosystems. So one uh, good example of this eco DRR is mangrove forest. If you can maintain a healthy mangrove ecosystems, it can not only mitigate disaster risks, but also uh, be a positive force for sustainable development. Oops. Yes. Now, we know that in the past 30 years or so, we already lost about 20% of mangrove ecosystems. Um, but even though, even we've lost so many, we know that mangrove ecosystems have been playing a, a very uh, a, a positive role in terms of the disaster risk reduction. Uh, in the 2004 uh, earthquake and tsunami uh, in the Indian Oceans that hit Sumatra, uh, Thailand, Sri Lanka, and other places, uh, Conservation International studies found that areas that maintained mangroves uh, intact or relatively intact were less affected by the, the tsunamis. Uh, in the uh, 2000, uh, 2013 uh, Typhoon Haiyan that hit Philippines, uh, Central Philippines, we also found that areas, communities that kept the mangrove forests were less affected by the, the storms that hit them. This is a map that shows, it's a kind of uh, vague here, but the reddish, yellowish uh, uh, areas shows the, the high vulnerable regions to, uh, uh, especially to uh, uh, storm surges and, and fl floods. Um, if you overlay the mangrove, there you go, the mangrove uh, habitats, you can see a lot of places in the high vulnerable regions that there is also uh, a mangrove uh, habitats there. So mangroves can be a positive uh, force for disaster risk reduction. Let's look at mangroves from an economist's eye. This is a study done by World Bank. Uh, you can see here that if for a hectare of mangrove forest, if you convert them to shrimp farms, this is how much you can gain in terms of economic uh, uh, value. But if you keep them intact, you don't get the shrimp farming uh, revenue, obviously, but it does generate other uh, revenue like wood and non-wood products, uh, fish habitats, but also carbon sequestration, and the big part is, is coastal protection from storms. So you can see, of course, you can't make money out of this, but it does bring a, a large uh, economic value to uh, a society. Now, key to a sustainable management of ecosystems such as mangroves is, we believe, is community participation. Now this is a study done by Critical Ecosystem Partnership Fund, which showed that strong capacity within local communities, civil societies, uh, end up in better maintained sustainable ecosystems. Now, I want to show you a, a couple of case studies uh, that we've done in terms of mangroves and other eco DRR projects. This is a case from Chira Island in Costa Rica. We work with women as collective, uh, helping them to uh, uh, establish uh, collectives and associations so that they can be uh, the uh, a source of, of, of management of, of the local mangrove forests, becoming the keepers of mangroves. And this really revitalized the coastal communities in the island and, and increased resilience to disaster risks. So community, especially involving women, we found that is very important in terms of uh, 
increasing the level of management of local of natural habitats. Uh, the second case is from the Verde Island Passage in the Philippines. This is known as one of the, the most biodiverse uh, uh, seascapes in the world. Uh, we took a science-based approach here, looking at where exactly these eco-DRR uh, solutions should be uh, planned and implemented. And again, working with the communities to find out, mapping out where those uh, uh, initiatives should be uh, undertaken. And also, we use the tools such as conservation agreements to support the local communities, not only to run this project alone, but bringing in other benefits to support the, the local communities, such as uh, uh, looking at uh, uh, management of fish stocks, uh, uh, et cetera. The third case is from Madagascar. Uh, this is not about mangroves, but I thought it's very interesting to uh, introduce to you because it, it, it was working with smallholder farmers uh, in, in the upstream regions. Uh, where uh, Madagascar is very prone to cyclones, and they would get hit, and they would lose uh, the source of their livelihoods, their agricultural farmland would be affected. But we work with the smallholder farmers, uh, provided capacity, you know, capacity building, and, and, and also looked at how we can diverse the income source for these communities, uh, uh, so that now they have a, uh, also working uh, with them so that they could manage the upstream uh, 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 watershed forest. Uh, and that uh, uh, resulted in a, a better kind of diverse livelihood base for the communities so that when, even when the cyclones hit their farmland, they would have other source of incomes, which would obviously help them more uh, uh, come back from the disaster faster than, than just having one source of income. So. This will be my last slide, I believe, but there are a lot of lessons that we've learned from these projects. Uh, first, healthy ecosystems does serve as natural buffers against disasters. And, and of course, eco-DRR cannot mitigate all of the risks, but it does help bring down the, the risk. Um, and in order to do that, communities that are empowered uh, to manage these resources, manage the ecosystems, uh, uh, well, actually, obviously, uh, you know, if you're managing them, it's more sustainable, uh, healthy ecosystems in place, and also that would help the community become more resilient uh, to disaster. So effective community engagement is key to eco-DRR. The science-based information is Im important uh, to provide to governments, to communities, so that they can make a, a more uh, appropriate, effective, efficient, uh, optimal, uh, uh, choices, decisions, uh, which uh, uh, options are really beneficial, not only to DRR, but sustainable development in general. Uh, in doing that, uh, uh, accounting the values, economic values of natural capitals, such as uh, the, the, the case I showed you in the mangrove, is very important. That so, especially for the local communities, so that they know that they're not just losing out in terms of eco economics. Uh, Combining green, these eco-DRRs, and gray infrastructure-based uh, solutions is important. I don't say that eco-DRR can solve all the issues, all the disaster risks, but if we combine them, that we can actually generate synergy uh, uh, between the green and the gray, uh, and, and so have even uh, better uh, disaster risk reduction uh, effect. And if we could do all this, uh, uh, I believe that eco-DRR can really contribute to sustainable development, be a positive force uh, uh, for the regions and communities to uh, uh, thrive, not just mitigating negative uh, disaster risks. Thank you.